The commander of the Iranian Army's Air Defense Force said Sunday that a number of long-range defense systems will be unveiled in the near future. Speaking in a gathering attended by a group of commanders on Sunday, Brigadier General Alareza Sabahi Fard commemorated the death anniversary of the late Imam Khomeini. He said that the defense deterrence and an increase in Iran's military might came after the victory of the Islamic Revolution, praising the late Imam Khomeini for becoming a role model for managers and directors of the Islamic society. The tirelessness and optimism of the late Imam was the reason behind his success at different times, the commander further said about late leader of the Islamic Revolution. The unveiling of a number of long-range defense systems will be done in the near future, and the Air Defense Combat Organization of the Army will be equipped with powerful and efficient indigenous weapons, Sabahi Fard also said. According to the threats, the defense power is being upgraded and optimized, and the specialized human resources also have the necessary competency in this regard, he concluded. Meanwhile, Iranian forces possess a diverse arsenal of ballistic munitions, including short-range and medium-range ballistic missiles. The largest and most capable of these munitions can reach targets up to 1,300 miles away. Tehran has also been working on an intercontinental ballistic missile capability to greatly improve its ability to strike at range. In addition to ballistic missiles, Iran has thousands of cruise missiles. Munitions like the Meshkat and Sumar land attack cruise missiles have a shorter range than large ballistic missiles and less destructive power, but they are still dangerous and deadly. Cruise missiles are especially dangerous because they can fly at low altitudes and stay below a radar's line of sight. Modern cruise missiles can also fly close to terrain features such as mountains, hills, and valleys, to hide themselves until their final approach. In addition, these missiles can fly in circuitous routes in order to bypass enemy radar and air defense systems. Tehran's cruise missile arsenal isn't necessarily the most capable, but it is still dangerous. Furthermore, the Iranian military can also deploy thousands of suicide drones. These loitering munitions might be smaller and less powerful than ballistic or cruise missiles, but they can still land a heavy punch, and they can be used to overwhelm or deplete enemy air defenses. Indeed, the Iranian attack against Israel clearly used that combined approach, with cheaper suicide drones launched earlier to attract the attention of Israeli defenses. A war between Israel and Iran would mainly be one of long-range strikes. The geographical separation of the two countries, and their limited to non-existent expeditionary warfare capabilities, mean that air power and long-range munitions would be the main tools of warfare. The Israeli air defenses are strong, as the recent attack showcased. Moreover, Israel can depend on powerful allies, including the United States, for early warning and interception assistance in the event of an Iranian attack.
Nevertheless, the Iranian long-range arsenal is powerful and can inflict heavy losses on Israel in the event of a full-scale conflict. In late May, Iran launched a new ballistic missile simultaneously dubbed the KHORRAMSHAHR-4 and the Kaibar. While the former name commemorates an Iranian city liberated during the Iran-Iraq War, a conflict that birthed the revolutionary regime's interest in missiles as a supplement for air power, the latter name comes from a Jewish stronghold in Arabia that was overrun by the Prophet Muhammad's armies 14 centuries ago, a salient event for Iran's current revolutionary leaders who seek Israel's destruction. The missile itself is based on an Iranian variant of a North Korean nuclear-capable platform known as the Musudan, a useful reminder of the long-standing military and missile cooperation between the two rogue regimes. Since receiving the Musudan in the mid-2000s, Iran has refined the weapon, developing a variant with a lighter warhead that could travel up to 3,000 kilometers, a move that, in effect, took it from being able to target parts of southern Europe to potentially being able to strike nearly all of Central Europe. Naturally, the development prompted the United Kingdom, France and Germany to raise concerns at the UN in 2019. And while the newest Khorramshahr does adhere to Tehran's self-imposed 2,000-kilometer range cap, Iranian officials traditionally caveat this with veiled threats against Europe, stressing that this limit isn't a technical constraint or permanent. <laughs>